why do we learn math and science? I mean, J.K. Rowling didn't use calculus to write Harry Potter. And not everybody needs to know the quadratic formula or Newton's laws of motion in order to make money. So why do we learn it anyways? Well, to begin, let's start with a bit of history. Who here has heard of the McDonald's Quarter Pounder with Cheese? Yeah, basically none of you. Well, it existed back in the 1980s, and it was a pretty successful burger. However, another fast food brand, a and wanted to compete with this burger. And they tried to be clever. Their strategy, make the exact same burger. Just make it a little bit bigger. They increased the patty size from one-fourth to one-third, which seems like a better deal. But this backfired. And people still went to McDonald's. But it wasn't because McDonald's puts toys in the kids' meals. It wasn't because the McDonald's burger was tastier either. In fact, blind taste tests showed that more people actually preferred the a and burger over the McDonald's burger. The reason is that over 50% of the people surveyed believed that one-fourth is greater than one-third, therefore making McDonald's seem like it was the better deal. I mean, next we could be having the McDonald's fifth pound burger. But let's be real here. The lesson is to not pick a fight with McDonald's. Now, this is not the only case in history where our knowledge of math has failed us. Even NASA is not immune from these types of errors. In 1998, NASA was undertaking one of its missions to Mars, the Mars Climate Orbiter. And one of the teams that was working on the project did all of their calculations in feet and pounds. The other team used the metric system. And to nobody's surprise, the orbiter crashed. I think that's really big incentive for us Americans to switch over to the metric system already. Now, as we can see, math and science teaches us some pretty important basic skills, skills that we cannot live our lives without. They teach us how to reason and think logically and carefully. We use these skills every day to make rational decisions. Whether we're trying to decide which burger is the best deal, or we're solving a difficult engineering problem, our lives depend on how we think and how we reason. And learning math and science is one of the best ways to do so. However, there is a more philosophical reason for why we learn math and science. And the benefits go far deeper than everyday arithmetic or problem solving. It has to do with how we deal with knowledge. Let's look at an example. Now, in 1905, there was a little-known patent clerk in Switzerland. He had messy hair and a small mustache. He failed some of his classes, and he was a daydreamer. I mean, that pretty much describes what my first year of college is going to look like next year. But little did he know, his work would lay the foundation for all of modern physics. And his name was Albert Einstein. Now, there was an unusual problem that puzzled Einstein. And the problem is that the speed of light is measured to be the same, no matter who is measuring it. And this puzzled many physicists, because it means that if you ran with the flashlight, you would be breaking the laws of physics. And that is because if I were running with a flashlight, I would see that the light is traveling a certain distance. But to somebody in the audience, that distance would be measured differently because the person in the audience isn't moving. So how can it be that two people measure different distances and yet get the same speed? And yet there have been numerous experiments done on this very phenomenon, and they have all proven that this fact is true whether we like it or not. So how did Einstein solve this problem? Well, he kept thinking 
and thinking and thinking. And he realized that he had to break away from what he and the scientific community already knew about the nature of space and time. Until one day, when Albert Einstein was sitting on a bus, he glanced up at a clock tower. And as the bus started moving, he imagined the hands of the clock slowing down, as if time itself was ticking slower. And yet when he looked at his own watch, he saw that it was moving just normally. Now that's what I usually see when I'm late for school. But for Einstein, this was the most profound revelation in all of modern physics. Because to him, it meant that in the case of running with a flashlight, just because the distances measured aren't the same, that doesn't mean the times have to be the same either. And with this simple fact, Einstein proved that space and time are not absolute, but rather they are experienced differently depending on your frame of reference. He showed us that space and time can twist and bend like a fabric, the fabric of space-time. He showed us that as we move faster and faster through space, time dilates and length contracts, but the only constant in both of these cases is the speed of light. Now this is the way that scientists think. It is the way that scientists break down problems and find beautiful solutions. The endeavor of science involves constant questioning and the challenging of our preconceived knowledge. Now, I'm not saying that if we all think like this, we'll be able to unravel the mysteries of quantum mechanics just by looking at a clock. But what I'm trying to say is that what we learn in math and science, we can apply to our own lives and find beautiful solutions to our problems. That is because math and science isn't just a study of how the world works. It is a methodology. It is a philosophy for how we should deal with knowledge. Because math and science teaches us that human progress is made by reconciling conflicting ideas. It teaches us to attack problems from every angle and to use perspective to break them down. It teaches us the importance of synthesizing ideas instead of dismissing one or the other. It teaches us to expand our minds with imagination and not let our preconceptions interfere with our search for the objective truth. Carl Sagan once said that every kid is a natural born scientist. Every person is filled with questions. And to learn math and science properly is to foster this innate curiosity. We were born to ask questions and science is the art of questioning. We learn it to be more open-minded and more insatiably inquisitive. To challenge our intuition. To expand our perspectives. To use our imagination. And to keep asking questions so that we can learn more about ourselves and about the world. This is why we learn math and science. Thank you.